This lecture focuses mainly on the importance of bull selection. The genetic merit of a herd largely depends on the choice of the bulls. The result of your choice of your bull selection is only observable four to five years later when the daughters of those bulls start to produce. The effect of the bull, however, stays in the herd for three to four generations and it's therefore very important to bull, do bull selection with great care. This slide gives an indication of a bull's influence in the populations where it has been applied. His first generation daughters will contain 50% of his genes. The second generation, if he has not been applied again, will contain around 25% of his genes and the third generation around 12.5%, indicating that a poor bull choice really has large repercussions. Breeding values of dairy bulls are determined from their daughter's performance. We therefore need progeny testing in order to estimate reliable breeding values for bulls. However, in the genomic era, these young bulls are genotyped at a very young age, um, which ensures reliable estimates of breeding values at a very young age. Today, we see that young genotype bulls are marketed whose sires have not even yet been progeny proven. We therefore see a tremendous increase in the rate of genetic improvement in our dairy populations. Selection pressure are extremely high on AI bulls. They will therefore be of much better genetic merit compared to herd bulls, where herd bulls are bulls bred by the producers themselves. International genetic improvement are at a very high rate. Every year you can expect the new young AI sires to be of better genetic merit compared to the previous year's bulls. However, something to always keep in mind as well is that locally bred bulls are more adapted to the South African environment, especially compared to bulls being bred for very intensive systems from colder climates. A profitable dairy business needs the highest possible milk yield and best milk composition possible. You need cows that calf regularly every 12 to 13 months, and you need cows with long productive lives. So when you start looking at bulls, selecting bulls, you need to keep these three factors in mind. Another thing that you need to consider is calving difficulty. Don't use sires that is, has been indicated as having calving ease problems or causing calving ease problems, don't use them on heifers. A lot of information is available today for sire selection, but also make sure that that information is relevant for the population in question. Information on AI bulls are available from semen catalogs, websites of AI companies, Top lists distributed by genetic evaluation centers all over the world. Information available are the pedigree of the bull, his inbreeding coefficient, EBVs and reliabilities of these EBVs, um, genetic profiles for confirmation and other traits, and selection indices. So here we have genetic information available on a USA bull, AI bull, so this bull is from the USA. His name is Alem Whistler, and his short name is Whistler. But this breeding values um, are published here on the Canadian Dairy Network. Um, therefore, these breeding values here are expressed on a Canadian scale. So this is relevant to the Canadian population. So here we have his, breed, his um, birth date, we have his inbreeding coefficient there, um, he has a, um, an embryo transfer and he, he has tested homozygous for the A2 protein allele. Here we've got his um, parent information, his pedigree information. So if you click on any of these links, you will um, go to their genetic profile on their system. 
So here we can see he is still a very young bull, born in 2017. Uh, we don't have any daughter information yet. So this is a GPA breeding values for this bull, meaning it's still a parent average and he has been genomically tested. So this is a genomically enhanced parent average from the April 2020 genetic evaluation of CDN. Um, so his overall reliability is 63%, which you can see is real, still low, although he has been geno genomically tested. And then here is his breeding values for production, milk, butter, fat, and protein. We, they also indicate the ranking. So he ranks in the 91st percentile of the population for milk yield, for example. This is his butter, fat, and protein percentage breeding values. Um, and then here, his selection indices are indicated. So we can see that that is the pro-dollar index. This is economically index, um, which is quite good. Um, here we have the total merit index called the LPI, uh, which is also there indicated as a genomically parent average LPI. And here we've got indices for production, durability, and health and fertility. Um, then here, this is his genomic profile for conformation traits. So you can see there we've got um, sub-indices on conformation, the mammary system, feet and legs, dairy strength, and rump. And then below here, the, indi uh, the individual traits are indicated. Uh, the way they do it is they express it here around the average of the breed. Um, some countries use the, uh, the uh, active average, other countries use the base year average. But you can see then, according to the average of the breed, if this bull for the specific trait are above the average or below the average. Now, all countries do their own genetic evaluations for the estimation of breeding values. These breeding values, however, are not comparable across countries. Therefore, Interbull was established to do joint international genetic evaluations for the estimation of maize breeding values of all AI sires around the world and present it then to the countries on every country's own genetic scale. Now, these maize breeding values are then directly comparable to the breeding values of your herd. So when you do bull selection, the very first thing you need to know is what the herd's genetic levels are so that you ensure that the bulls that you select will improve those herd's genetic levels. Remember, the breeding values presented in overseas catalogs are not comparable to South African figures. Most AI companies have their own commercial breeding programs to help farmers with bull selection. They set up minimum specifications per trade for bull selection, but are this done according to the herd's genetic levels as estimated from the genetic evaluation? I'm not so sure. Furthermore, it does take inbreeding into account, but just on a restricted basis because it's only taking three to four generations of pedigree information into account and we saw that you need at least six generations for calculation of accurate current inbreeding levels. Furthermore, of course, these commercial breeding programs only include their own bulls. Um, so it's not really an objective way to select AI bulls for your herd. Is a start book therefore developed an independent breeding program called SADairyBulls.com where all available AI sires are being considered and all available pedigree information is used for the calculation of inbreeding. Bull selection are then based on a herd's own genetic levels and a farmer can customize his own breeding objective for selection of bulls. This independent breeding program therefore enables a farmer to select bulls that will make the most genetic progress in his herd with regards to his own breed objective 
but causing the least inbreeding. In the selection of bulls, the reliability of breeding values also needs to be considered. Young bulls are in the top of the genetic rankings. They are the most genetically advanced bulls available, but their breeding, breeding values are still less reliable even if they were genotyped. Proven bulls, however, are not in the top anymore, but they are much safer to use because you know exactly what they're going to breed in your herd. With genomics today, we see that young genotyped AI bulls are being marketed from sires that is not even daughter proven yet. And there's definitely a certain uh, risk involved in this. And for this reason, it is recommended that bull teams are being used in your herd with regards to young genotyped bulls to spread the risk across the whole team of bulls. With regards to the cost of semen straws, we see that the price of semen straws not necessarily reflects the genetic merit of the bull. It's often a question of supply and demand, and we see that if a bull proves to be popular for whatever reason, there's usually an exponential increase in the price of that bull's semen. The price of the semen should therefore be considered relative to the expected genetic improvement that that bull will cause in your herd. Semen of young national test bulls, therefore South African bulls, are usually much cheaper than imported semen and it will increase the reliability of maize breeding values if it is more um, widely used by our breeders. We therefore recommend that our breeders should consider all ways to use local AI sires as well in their herds. Never use semen of only young genotyped bulls Always use at least one AI sire as well, proven sire. We recommend that three to four sires should be applied to 100 cows. Looking at herd bulls, this is bulls bred by the breeder himself from out of his own herd. Now, herd bulls breeding values takes an extremely long time, if ever, to become proven. A bull is considered to be proven when he has daughters in at least 10 herds and then you know his breeding values are reliable, become stable and will not change as more information is being added in the genetic evaluation. By then, this bull's daughters will already be in later lactations and if his breeding values are proved to be poor, then his genetics are already well established in your herd. This will take a few generations to correct, not years, generations. Herd bulls are subjected to much lower selection pressure compared to AI bulls. It has been shown that there's a more than 80% chance that herd bulls will be of lower genetic merit compared to AI sires. If a herd bull is brought in from another herd, the breeder should ensure that that herd is of a better genetic merit compared to his own herd. There should never be more than 20% of cows in a herd being bred from a herd bull. It has already been mentioned that a lot of information is available today for the selection of bulls. But why is it important for us to consider a, the breeding values of a bull on a South African basis for bull selection? Let us look at Ayatollah. Ayatollah is a Jersey bull, born in 2001 in the USA. He has daughters in a lot of countries. For example, he has more than 18,000 daughters in the USA, in almost 2,500 herds. In Canada, he has more than 1,200 daughters. In Denmark, he has 123 daughters. And in South Africa, almost 2,000 daughters. Now this is the TMI, the Total Merit Index. This is the selection index, the different selection indices used in the different countries. So in the USA, his net merit index is 93. In Canada, his LPI is 1,571. In Denmark, his Nordic Total Merit Index is minus 3. And in South Africa, his sign it is at 105. So very different across the countries. 
Now let us look at Denmark for example. In Denmark, Ayatollah only has 123 daughters, meaning that his breeding values are much less reliable compared to his breeding values in the USA. Denmark, however, do not use this bull's USA breeding values for marketing. They use the Danish breeding values. Why? Because they want to know what type of daughters will this bull breed in their population. They want to know where in their genetic ranking will this bull fit in. This is Madhavaskar Erastar, a Wolstein AI sire from the USA. And here we see his breeding values on a South African scale, therefore based on his South African daughters. And below here we can see his breeding values on a Canadian scale. And we are specifically looking here at somatic cell score as an indication of other health. So his daughters in South Africa, the daughters that he bred there, is below the average, the breed average for other health, while in Canada his daughters were to, were to the more desirable level with regards to other health. Why does this happen? Why is this so? Because the South African population are already on a higher genetic level, better genetic level, for other health compared to the Canadian population. If we look, for example, at calving interval in the South African population, he is below the average with regards to fertility, so he breeds daughters with having longer calving intervals, worse fertility than the average of the breed, while in Canada, his daughter fertility is in, are indicated as being above the average because the genetic level of a South African population are already better with regards to this trait compared to the Canadian population. And then lastly, looking at rump height, you can see in the South African population, he breeds daughters that is taller compared to the average of the breed, while in Canada, he breeds daughters that's much um, shorter than the average of the breed. Why? Because our South African population is smaller compared to the Canadian population. Always keep this equation in mind. The phenotype of the animal is determined by its genetic merit for the trait, as well as the environment in which the animal must perform. Now, especially for lowly heritable traits like longevity and fertility, there is triggers in the environment which cause certain genes to switch on and others to switch off, so that it even might be different sets of genes being involved in the expression of traits in different environments and in different populations. Furthermore, due to genotype by environmental interactions, bulls performing very well in certain environments might not be performing as well in other environments. The bottom line is therefore to select bulls on information that is applicable to the population where he is going to be applied.